Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Before we do get started, I do want to encourage you to check out our store.greatdetectives.net. There you can pick up uh, all my books and ebooks, including What Made the Golden Age Shine. It's my manifesto on what makes the golden age of entertainment so great. It's available for 99 cents from all major ebook stores, and again, it's available at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Nick Carter, the original air date, June the 19th of 1949, and the title is The Case of the Perfect Alibi. Stand by for Nick Carter, Master Detective. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Nick Carter in another of his famous and exciting adventures, starring Lon Clark, The Case of the Perfect Alibi. Patsy, what's the idea of phoning me here? What's up? Well, I... I, Nick, you've got to come to the hotel right away. Room 411. And bring that box with you. Oh, why, Patsy? What's the matter? I, I can't tell you, but, but don't say anything to Chief Brody. If you do, they'll... I mean... Patsy, something's wrong. What is it? No, nothing's wrong. Only... Don't come, Nick! They're going to... Patsy! <laughs> Patsy! Now, Nick Carter, Master Detective, and the case of the perfect alibi... It is midnight in the little upstate resort town of Lake Hillman. Chief Brody of the local police stands beside a flashy, expensive sedan. Behind the wheel is a dark, heavy-set man wearing a huge diamond on his left hand. His face disfigured by a jagged scar. So I run through a red light. So what? So you get a ticket, mister. Let's see your driver's license and the car registration. Sure. You fellas think you can come up here from the city and do just about anything you want. I aim to show you different. Here. Huh? Oh, the license. Give me it. Robert J. Hey, you ain't one of the Crane brothers that's mixed up in all them rackets down the city, are you? Am I? Sure you are. Remember last year when that brother of yours got sent to the electric chair for killing an officer? From what I hear, this fellow Winston's going to get you and the other one before long, too. Yeah? Yes, and good riddance, I say. If you take my advice, mister, you'll get out of this town fast. As soon as you've paid, you're fine. We don't want your kind around here. Nice and cozy, ain't it, Mr. Winston? Just you and me alone here in your apartment where we can talk without nobody to bother us, huh? I'm not afraid of that gun, Crane. And I'm not afraid of you. Now say what you came to say and get out. Sure, sure, but not for a while yet. This ain't much of a dump for a big shot like you to live in. The DA's office don't pay the special prosecutors so good, huh? I'm satisfied. You like working for glory, huh? I'm working for the satisfaction of wiping out such scum as you, Crane. Murderers and racketeers Yeah, and... yeah, and making a big name for yourself, too. You and your big campaign to clean up the town. Crane, if you weren't scared, you wouldn't have come here tonight. But it won't do you any good. I'll get you and the rest of your mob, just as I got that gun-crazy kid brother of yours. That's what I come to talk about, Mr. Winston, my brother Johnny. He was a killer, and he got what he deserved, the chair. Yeah, you sent Johnny to the chair just one year ago tonight, just at midnight. Now, do you know why I'm here? No. Why? It's one minute to midnight now, Mr. Winston. And when that clock starts to strike, I'm going to send you the same place you sent my kid brother. You can't bluff me. Why, every cop in town... Cops? You know what I think of cops? I'll show you. Pick up that phone if you want to. Go on, call the cops. See if they can help you. What is this, a trick? Go on, call them. All right, I will. Operator, give me the police. Quick. (laughs) It's midnight, Mr. Winston. Hello, this is Special Prosecutor Winston... Send... Uh, Rocky... So long, Mr. Winston. Say hello to Johnny for me. (laughs) 
Hello. Hello, this is Sergeant Matheson, homicide. Sent out a call for Rocky Crane, suspicion of murder. Send a couple of boys to every one of those gambling houses he owns. And send a couple to his apartment. Notify the radio cars to watch out for a 1949 Cadillac sedan. Light gray and loaded down with chromium. License number six. Yeah? Oh, oh yeah, Dolan. He... He's spending the weekend where? Lake Hillman, huh? Okay. I'll get in touch with the Lake Hillman police and have them bring him in. Look, Sarge, what's the idea of dragging me back to town in the middle of the night? Take a look out the window, Rocky. It's morning now. The sun's coming up. So what? What's the beef, Sarge? You were picked up just as you got out of your car in front of the Lake Hillman Hotel at exactly 13 minutes to two. That's right. Where had you been? Just out for a little ride. Why? I'll say you'd been out for a ride. You rode back here to the city, bumped off Leonard Winston from the DA's office, you and then you... You mean somebody knocked off Mr. Winston? Well, now, ain't that too bad? It's too bad for you, smart guy. You hated Winston because he sent your brother to the chair. You swore you're getting for it. Did I, sir? Yes, you did. Well, you know how it is. And Winston was making things hot for you now, too. Another month, he'd have closed up every one of those gambling houses of yours and run you out of town. He couldn't have proved nothing on me. Sure, I'm glad he's dead, but I didn't do it. Look, you can't lie out of this one, Rocky. Winston called headquarters just before he was killed. He started to say your name. But, Sarge, I wasn't anywhere near the city last night. Oh, no? (laughs) Heh! You're going to have a tough time making a jury believe that. Why, Sarge, it ain't going to be tough at all. What? Take a look at this. Take a... What is it? It's a ticket for running through a red light in Lake Hillman, 150 miles from here, Sarge. And look at the time on it. 12 o'clock midnight. 12... Midnight? What? Why, that's the same time Winston was killed. Yeah, I know, I know. And that traffic ticket proves I was 150 miles away when it happened. Now, try to break that alibi, copper. Just try it. (laughs) Oh, I had to turn him loose, Nick. There wasn't anything else I could do. I suppose you checked for the Lake Hillman officer who gave him the ticket, Matty. Why, of course I did. It was the chief of police himself. Hmm. The chief of police was directing traffic. Yeah, Patsy, you know how it is in those small towns. They've only got three men on the force, and on Saturday night, all of them have to turn out to take care of the traffic. You're sure he isn't mistaken about who was in Rocky's car? Nick, he swears it was Rocky. He described him to me. Then I showed him pictures of Rocky, and he swears it's the same guy. Well, just what you want me to do? Nick, look, I got to crack this case, and I got to have help. I'll bet anything Rocky Crane bumped off Winston, no matter what kind of an alibi he's got. Well, I suppose the biggest clue you've got is the fact that Winston tried to speak his name when he called headquarters. But, Patsy, we don't know that he was going to accuse Rocky of shooting him. Well, maybe not, Nick, but here is the clincher. Rocky knew that Winston was bumped off at midnight. Now, how did he know it unless he did the job himself? I sure didn't tell him. But, Matty, that's not proof that you can take before a jury. Oh, I know, Nick, I know. But somehow, some way, we've got to get that proof. Uh, Sergeant, do you think Chief Brody could be lying? I don't know, Patsy. I'd hate to think it, well, but... Well, then let's not but... think it until we've exhausted every other possibility. How about Rocky's brother, Red? Didn't you say he was at Lake Hillman, too? Yeah, Nick, Why, what... Nick, Red's just as bad as Rocky. And he'd have had the same motive Rocky did for killing Winston. I'll bet You'll he... forget, Patsy. Huh? It was Rocky's name Winston tried to say on the phone. Yeah, and besides that, Red's got a better alibi than Rocky has. He is seen in the Lake Hillman Hotel about 11 o'clock and again at 12.30. Positive identification. Then, then maybe Red was driving Rocky's car when Chief Brody gave him the ticket. Look, Patsy, what? Rocky was driving his own car when Brody picked him up just before 2 o'clock. Oh. Okay, okay, I give up. Well, just the same, Matty. A man can't be two places at the same time. Either you're wrong about Rocky's but being But I'm killed. not wrong, Nick. I'll stake my life on it. All right, then. Something's wrong at the other end. Suppose Patsy and I drive up to Lake Hillman and try to find out what it is. Even if we learn nothing, I'll enjoy a drive out in the country with an attractive girl. And Patsy, you're particularly attractive today in that new lavender dress. <laughs> Mr. 
Rocky, jeepers, I'm glad to see you. I was afraid something had gone wrong. No, no, they turned me loose about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Well, then where have you been all this time? It's after 10 now. I went around to the club for a while. Get your stuff together, Red. I want to pick up the old man. Uh, and... Don't worry about him. I took care of that little matter myself this morning. You what? Sure. After the cops picked you up, this town was buzzing. I thought if the old boy heard anything, he started putting two and two together. You when... thought? Since one of you got brains enough to think... I said we'd dump him on the way back to the city, didn't I? Yeah, but suppose he'd have got wise. Suppose he'd have gone to the cops. Yeah, yeah, maybe you were right at that. Yeah, sure I was. So I had to meet me out at the edge of town, Never see? mind the blueprint. What about his stuff? His stuff? Yeah, his clothes and things. Well, I guess they're still over at that crummy boarding house where he was staying. Why? Ed, you mean you didn't have him take all his stuff with him when he left? No. Why make him think something was up? Are you dumb ox, you stupid, fat-headed jerk. Uh, take it easy, Rocky. What's he got there anyway? A couple of shirts, an extra pair of socks, maybe. And the box, the box, bird brain. Oh, gee, Rocky. I forgot about that. If the cops ever find that box and hook the old man up with us, we're sunk. I might have known you'd louse things up for me. I, I can get it back, Rocky. I, I can go over there right now. Then See, get I'll... moving. And listen, Red. Yeah. Get everything else that belonged to him. Everything. Let him think he skipped his room right and beat it. But don't let nobody see no, you. They ain't gonna see me. If they do... If they I... do, just make sure they don't talk about it. Make sure they don't never talk about that or anything else. <laughs> I'm glad you're still in your office, Chief Brody. I was afraid I'd miss you. Well, you're just lucky, Mr. Carter. Comes half past 11 at night. I'm generally home in bed. What's on your mind? Well, Sergeant Matheson tells me you positively identified Rocky Crane as the man you gave a ticket to at midnight last night. That's right, Carter. But, Chief, the sergeant is just as positive that Rocky Crane killed Winston. Not at midnight last night, he didn't. What makes the sergeant so sure it had to be Rocky? Well, Chief, the motive was revenge. Winston was killed exactly one year to the minute after Rocky's brother went to the electric chair for murdering a police officer. What about it? Well, don't you see? If it was revenge, Rocky would want to do it himself. And Maddie swears that Winston even tried to give the police Rocky's name. Well, look here, Carter. I hate crooks and killers as much as anybody. But at midnight last night, Rocky Crane was here in Lake Hillman. I saw him. I gave him a ticket for passing the red light in the corner of Main and Elm Streets. And he passed that light precisely at 12 o'clock? That's what I said. Uh, I can't help feeling that somehow he's using you for an alibi. Well, if he is, I've got to give him that alibi. I've got no choice. Come in. Oh, Mr. Brody, I didn't know you were busy, but I was passing the courthouse and I saw the light in your well, office. Well, for Pete's sake, Emily Dawson. What are you doing out at this time of night? And all dressed up like it was Halloween? Oh, I'm just coming home from the junior class play. We gave Romeo and Juliet. I was the old nurse. You should have seen me. Alas, alas, my lady's dead. Oh, well, a day. Oh, yes, 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 I remember now. Meant to get to the play myself, but I've been so busy. Uh, Miss Bowen, Mr. Carter, this is Emily Dawson. Oh, hello, hello Emily. I'm worried about Mr. Worthington. I well, thought who's that Mr. Maybe... Worthington? Well, he's one of our boarders. The only one we've got this weekend, and I haven't seen him since right after breakfast. Well, after all, Emily, it's not quite 11.30 yet. Maybe he went to a movie or even to your play. Oh, but he didn't. He promised faithfully he'd come to the play, but he wasn't there, and he never goes to the movies. He told me so. Well, I still wouldn't worry, Emily. Just because a grown man isn't home by 11.30... Oh, something's the... happened. I'll bet he's been hit by a car and he's lying in a ditch somewhere. His poor, sightless eyes staring up at the cold blue oh, sky. Oh, Emily, stop acting. The show's over. <sighs> He hasn't been home all day, not even for dinner. Well, there's still no reason and he to... he promised th faithfully to come to the play tonight. Now, look, Emily, Mr. Carter and me have got important things to talk about. Now, you run along home, forget about it. If you won't do anything, I will. But what can you do? I'm going to telephone the Crystal Club in the city and ask them to notify his folks. The Crystal Club? Yes, it's, it's a kind of a residential hotel, Mr. Carter. He told me Let he... The opened... Crystal Club isn't a residential hotel, it's a gambling house. Oh, no. Not only a gambling house, it's one of a chain that belongs to the Crane Brothers. The Crane Brothers? He caught her. I'd like to know why he's up here in Lake Hillman at this particular time. If you think Mr. Worthington is a gambler, you're wrong. He's an actor. An actor? Well, he used to be. After we got to be friends, he showed me a scrapbook. Why, well, he's played just about every kind of a part there is, I guess. Now, wait a minute. Miss Dawson, are you sure that Mr. Worthington didn't just pack up and skip out this morning? Of course I'm sure. Well, I looked in his room after supper. Maybe he's come back home while you've been down here. Well, well Mom is there. You could phone her and ask. We'll do better than that, Miss Dawson. We'll go and see for ourselves. <laughs> oh, 
thanks for calling me up, Susan. I'll tell Emily how much you enjoyed the play. No, I'm all alone in the house now, but I expect her any minute. She was worried about our new boarder and... Huh? Oh, nothing important. You know how excitable Emily is. Yes, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Bye, Susan. I wonder if I should have waited and come home with Emily. She may have run... What's that? Oh, well, that must be Mr. Worthington. Mr. Worthington? That's funny. I better go see if he's all right. I'm sure that noise came from his room. Are you in your room, Mr. Worthington? Mr. Worthington, you're not sick, are you? Mr. Wor... Ow! Oh! The doctor says your mother's going to be all right. Then why is she still unconscious? She has a slight concussion from that blow on the head, Emily. In a few days, she'll be as good as ever. But why would anyone want to hurt Mama? I'm afraid we'll have to blame your friend, Mr. Worthington, Emily. Mr. Worthington? I don't believe it. Oh, but don't you see, darling? He had some connection with those racketeers. But he's such a nice old man. Oh, Patsy, I'm more inclined to think that it was someone else. Hmm? Someone who came here for his belongings. One of the Crane brothers? Maybe. What? And when Mrs. Dawson walked into the room, he socked her and got away. Then Worthington must have had something in his room that would incriminate them, some some piece of evidence. Well, if he did, it's not there now. Everything that belonged to him is gone. Well, everything that was in the room is gone. What? I have his makeup box. You do? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Worthington was just wonderful with makeup, and he promised he'd fix me up to look like an old lady for the class play tonight, but he didn't come home, so I... Well, I went up to his room and got it. Oh, where is it, Emily? Right over here on the mantel. Oh, I wouldn't have kept it or anything like that. I just wanted Let to... Let me see the box, please. Oh, yes, sir. I know Mr. Worthington wouldn't have minded my using it. He told me now, that don't any... don't worry, t- Emily. I'm not blaming you for the box. I'm glad you did. Now, let's see what's in here. Huh? Looks just like every other makeup box, doesn't it? A lot of old, dirty sticks of grease paint. Yes, but and... everything isn't old, Patsy. Here's what? a brand new bottle of collodion and a new bottle of spirit gum. Oh. Oh, the spirit gum is what they use for sticking on false beards. False mustaches, too. And collodion makes an excellent artificial scar. An artificial scar? Then maybe it wasn't Rocky the Chief Brody gave the traffic ticket to after all. Maybe it was Mr. Worthington, made up to look like him. It could be. With only a dim light from the dashboard on his face, it wouldn't be hard to get away with a disguise. No. Emily, tell me. Is Mr. Worthington a heavy-set man with a deep voice? Oh, no. No, Mr. Carter, he's little and skinny. He's got a high, sort of oh, cracked-sounding voice. A man like that could never impersonate Rocky Crane, not with all the makeup in the world. No, but I know who could. You do? Patsy, get us a couple of rooms at the hotel. We won't be going back to the city tonight. All right, Nick, but what are we staying here for? I'm going back to see Chief Brody. I've got a nice new idea I want to test out. <laughs> Hey, you dumb jerk. The one thing you should have gotten is the one thing you leave there. Oh, I tell you, Rocky, that box wasn't in his room. Then why didn't you search the rest of the house? I would have. But right after I slugged the old lady, I heard Carter and the two dames coming in. I had to beat it out the window. And Carter did find the box, you're sure of that? I told you, didn't I? I hung around outside to see what was going to happen. After about an hour, Carter came out with the box under his arm. I seen it plain under the street light. Okay, okay, so he's got the box. So maybe he'll even figure out how we worked it, but that still ain't proof, Red. Sure, sure it ain't, Rocky. That dumb police chief swore he was giving me a ticket at midnight, and a smart lawyer can tie him in knots if he tries to take it back in spite of what... Hey, wait a minute. Huh? What, Rocky? You didn't touch none of that stuff in the box, did you? There ain't nothing there that might have your fingerprints on it, is there? Well, I... Come on, come on. Did you touch anything or didn't you? Well, the old man had to make me up in the car, and I... A couple of times I had to hold things for him. You stupid idiot! Oh, Rocky, what's the matter? What's the idea of socking me like that? You know what you've done? You give them everything they want. You give them all the proof they need to send us both to the chair. We get the box back. How can we we get it back? Tell me that, genius. Well, Well, I... Hey, that girl that works for Carter. What about her? She's right here in this hotel. She was at the desk signing up for a room when I come in. Look, we... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Maybe you got something. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just might work. It's got to. Yeah, you see? I ain't always so dumb. Get on that phone, Red. Find out what room she's in. Sure, sure, Rocky. Then what, huh? Never mind. You get her room number. I'll take care of the rest. Yes, Carty, it was kind of dark inside that car when I gave Rocky that ticket. Then it could have been Red Crane made up to look like Rocky, couldn't it? The difference in height wouldn't show with him sitting behind the wheel. And they both have the same type of face, big and beefy. Yes, I guess it could have been if he had some kind of black dye on that red hair of his. Not dye. Mascara. Something that he could wash out quickly. And there's a big cake of mascara on this makeup box. And it's almost used up. Yes, And with paint on his face to give him a dark complexion like Rocky's and a false mustache and and that scar painted on with uh, whatever it is. Claudian. (laughs) Professional actors use it all the time. All right, so maybe it could have been red instead of Rocky. But you don't have any proof that it was. Not a bit of proof. That's why we have to find Worthington's body. If we can't prove that Rocky murdered Winston, perhaps we can prove that Red killed Worthington and that Rocky was an accessory. What makes you so sure anybody killed the old man? Why else would he have disappeared without taking his things with him? And besides, he's the only one who could tell what really happened. The Crane boys would never be safe while Worthington was alive. Yes, yes, I see what you mean. But without having any idea where to look for him, it's going to be pretty hard finding the body. No, I don't think so. If they wanted us to think Worthington had run out, they'd hide the body where it wouldn't be likely to be found. Well, sure, There can't be too many places like that near here. No, I guess there ain't. But they can't do anything tonight. It's almost 2 a.m. Well, all right. Morning will be all right. But get every man you can on the job. The sooner we get at it. For the love of Pete, what now? I want to get home, get to bed. Lake Hillman Police Station, Chief Brody speaking. Chief, this is this is Patsy Bowen. Oh, hello, Miss Bowen. May I? Is Nick there? In just a minute. For you, Carter. Oh, thanks. Yes, Patsy, what's up? Nick, I... You've got to come to the hotel right away. Room 411, and bring that makeup box with you. Well, why, Patsy? What's the matter? I, I, I can't tell you, but don't say anything to Chief Brody. If you do, they'll... Hey, Patsy, I something's mean... wrong. What is it? What is it? Nothing's wrong, but... Don't come, Nick! They're going to... Patsy! <laughs> Patsy! What? What's wrong, Carter? You're pale as a ghost. I don't know what's wrong. Let me have that makeup box. Well, sure, but what for? I'm taking it over to the hotel, to room 411. <laughs> Come in, Carter. What's the score, Rocky? Where's Patsy? Sit down, Carter. Put your gun away. I've got one, too, you'll notice. What have you done with her? Nothing yet. And she ain't here in the hotel, so don't get any ideas. Where is she? I told you to sit down in that chair right across the table from you me. You hurt her, I'll see I you. haven't. She's with Red. If you do what I tell you to, I'll get him on the phone, and he'll have her back here in five minutes. Now sit down. Okay. But I'm keeping my gun pointed right at your belt. So what? You won't use it. Because if something happens to me, I can't make that phone call. It'll be too bad for the little lady. What do you want? I want that makeup box under your arm. If I let you have it, you let Patsy go? Right away? Yeah, sure, sure. Now hand over that box and put away that gun. And leave you sitting there with a gun pointed at me? Oh, no. The way things are now, we're even. I've got you covered and you've got me covered. But I got an ace in the hole, don't forget. Your girlfriend. If I don't make that phone call in the next 15 minutes, Red... You're going to make that call, Rocky. I'm betting my life and Patsy's life that you're afraid to shoot it out. You lose that bet, wise guy. I just as soon die this way as in the chair, and if I do, you go with me. Not if I shoot first. Even if you shoot first. Look at the way I'm holding this rod, propped against the table lamp, pointed straight at you. I've already pulled the trigger, Carter. The only thing that's keeping the hammer from falling is my thumb. So what? So if you shoot me, my thumb lets go of the hammer and you get a bullet. Not only that, the girl will too. Red's got his orders. Doesn't look as though I have much choice, does it? No, Carter. I'm holding all the aces. But I'm holding the Joker, Rocky. Hey, you dirty... Keep away from that gun, Rocky. I hear you shot me. No, I... I aimed at the gun itself. Your hand's only numb from the shot. Well, how... It's one bet you overlooked. 
Your gun was propped up and pointed at me, but my bullet knocked it aside and spoiled your aim. Okay, but Red still got the girl. You're forgetting that. I'm not forgetting anything. You're going to get on that phone and call Red. Ah, oh, no, I ain't. You'd rather have me break your arm? I ain't making any call. Let her die. Let no mercy. No, no, stop. Are you going to make that call? Yeah, yeah. But let up on my arm. All right, over here to the phone. You better make it sound convincing. Oh, my arm. Just a reminder. Now go ahead. And remember one wrong word. I now. won't try nothing. Okay. Take up that phone. The hello, desk. Give me room 619. No, you were lying. She is here in the hotel. Yeah, Red. Save away. your breath for Red. Hello, hello, Red. It's Rocky. Yeah, everything's fine. I got it. You can let her go now. Don't argue with me. Do what I tell you. Tell him to come here. Alone. Red, get yourself over to my room fast. But let the dame go first. Yeah, right. But make it fast. Now let go of my arm. Sure, Rocky. I'm through with you for now. No. Now we have to get a reception arranged for your brother. When he arrives. Uh, Nick, did they find Mr. Worthington's body? Oh, yes, Matty. It was in the old stone quarry under 20 feet of water, weighted down with scrap iron. Yeah, but have you really got any proof that Red killed him? Plenty. Ballistics can prove that he was shot with Red's revolver. Oh, then I suppose Rocky will be convicted, too, as an accessory. So it doesn't matter whether or not you ever prove that he murdered Winston. Probably. Huh. But I think we can prove it. Yeah, Nick? How? Red's fingerprints were on two of the sticks of grease paint in Worthington's makeup box. Those fingerprints are evidence that Worthington did a makeup job on Red. Uh-huh. Well, after that, it won't be hard to convince a jury that Rocky's alibi isn't worth a nickel. I wonder how they ever thought up such an idea. Well, Worthington was out of work, was broke. Yeah. So he took a job as porter at the Crystal Club. Red found out he was an actor, and that started him thinking that Worthington's skill with makeup could be used to furnish Rocky with a perfect alibi. And, and the old man didn't even know he was mixed up in a murder plot? No, he was completely innocent. They told him they were going to play a practical joke on some friends of theirs. Well, just how did they work it, Nick? Well, the scheme worked like this, Matty. Rocky took Red's car, drove to the city, and killed Winston. Mm. In the meantime, Red picked up Rocky's car, met Worthington, got made up to look like Rocky, then intentionally ran through that red light and got a ticket. Well, one thing I can't understand is why Rocky allowed Winston to call the police just before he shot him. Well, that was part of his alibi. Rocky wanted the police to know the exact time Winston was murdered, because that was the exact time Red, disguised as Rocky... Was he getting the traffic ticket? Yeah, but he even let Winston call out his name. Well, that was something Rocky didn't figure on. As soon as Winston identified himself, Rocky shot him. But Winston still had enough strength left to try to identify his killer. He was a brave man. Wish I could be like that. But you know, when I opened the door to my room and saw Red standing there with a gun, I, I just froze. I was scared to death. Well, you weren't the only one, Patsy. I had cold chills, wondering if I was going to be in time to save you. Well... At least all this may give Emily Dawson an idea for the next high school play. Yeah? What's that? Another one of Mr. Shakespeare's little masterpieces. The one called All's Well That Ends Well. Oh, um, no thanks, Laura. Not tonight. Okay, bye. Who is that, Patsy? Now, Laura Bruce. She wanted me to go to a seance with her. Can mm. you imagine me going to a seance? Oh, why not? Spirit mediums can do wonderful things sometimes. Remember Madame Janer? Oh, that one. You'll have to admit that she told her clients things nobody in the world could possibly have known, except a ghost. Oh, she certainly did. But the way she found out those things, brr, makes me shiver. Well, save your shivers for next week, Patsy, when we tell all about Madame Janer and the case of the custom-made corpse. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Lon Clark is starred as Nick. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Others in the cast were Brian Rayburn, Ken Lynch, Maurice Tarplin, and Cameron Prudhoff. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons with original music played by Henry Silver. This program is fictional and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. 
This is Bill Tonkin inviting you to be with us next week at this same time for the case of the custom-made corpse. Another adventure with Nick Carter, Master Detective. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is Andrew J. Graham, author of the Web Surfer series. Oh, and a madam's wife. You're listening to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. Welcome back. Well, kind of an inverse uh, mystery here and uh, a fairly solid. Uh, it's worth noting that there are actually only three um, 1949 episodes of Nick Carter available. Of course, these are the very last uh, episodes circulating of the series. It's kind of also seems to be an interesting shift in tone. Um, and we, we've kind of heard this throughout the series. Uh, when the series really got started back in the early, uh, 40s, 1942, 43, um, you really heard, uh, Patsy, uh, as a respected and valued aide. As the years went on, uh, she didn't come off quite as well. But in this episode, you have Nick uh, complimenting her and also her showing a dash of bravery uh, in 1949. So it's some interesting movement in the uh, portrayal of Patsy Bowen. Well, that will actually do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And then join us back here again uh, next Thursday for another episode of Nick Carter. In the meanwhile, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Ray.